Hello and welcome back to this two-part series on interlacing. In the last episode, we looked at some history behind interlacing to understand why it was needed and how it was implemented. Today, we're going to build on that information by taking a look at how you can deal with a piece of interlaced footage if you ever come across one. More on this after the break. <laughs> This is 0612TV. Welcome aboard. De-interlacing. That's the term used when one wants to play back an interlaced video clip on a progressive scan monitor and to not see the interlacing artifacts. Having said that, if you only want to de-interlace a clip for playback, many video players give you the option to do that on the fly. For example, take a look at this. This is VLC Player, which is one of the more popular open source video players out there. Having loaded up a video, I simply go to Video, De-Interlace, On. As an advanced setting, you can even go to Video, De-Interlace Mode and choose the algorithm used to de-interlace the video. But what? De-interlacing algorithms? Why yes, there are many ways in which an interlaced video can be de-interlaced, creating different results. But before we continue to look at the different algorithms, I'm going to assume from this point that you're looking at a more permanent form of deinterlacing. Instead of just deinterlacing a clip on the fly during playback, we're going to use a software to get rid of those interlacing lines for good, creating a progressive scan video clip that can be played back directly without issues. The program we're going to be using here is called Virtual Dub. If you'd like to follow along with this tutorial, go ahead and download the program by following the link in the video description. I will also provide you with a single interlaced video clip for you to work on. Now, Virtual Dub only works on AVI files, but a plugin exists to let it read more formats. I'm not going to be explaining how to install that in this video, but I'll provide some summarized instructions in the video description along with the plugin's download link. Once you've got Virtual Dub set up, go ahead and drag and drop the interlaced clip into the program. Now go to Video filters, then click add and double click the de-interlace option. Right off the bat, we have a huge plethora of options to work with. Instead of taking it sequentially like a progressive scan, I'm going to show you the options from the least efficient to the most efficient. Now recall what we learned in the last lesson. Each interlace frame is made up of two interlace fields at different time intervals. Therefore, the simplest but least efficient deinterlacing method is to simply discard one set of lines. Then, the gaps are filled in by doubling the remaining lines. This means you have effectively halved your video resolution, as well as your temporal or time resolution. Of course, this means not the most optimal result. To do this, set your deinterlacing mode to discard fields. You can set the field order to either keep top or keep bottom. Either way, one set of lines will be discarded every frame. If you click OK, you'll notice you get this weird stretched result. The reason for this is that the lines have been discarded, but the vertical lines haven't been doubled up yet. To do this, simply right click the output image, then select the 16-9 option if you have a widescreen video. Otherwise, select the 43 option. You can play this back by clicking the output playback button. Notice how the interlacing artifacts have been reduced, but also notice how the image has lost sharpness since the vertical resolution has been halved. The next method is to blend the fields together. Each field gets doubled up to create a complete frame at half resolution. The two images are then blended together to create a single frame. Doing so smooths out the jagged edges slightly, so you get a softer and somewhat more gradual result. To do this, set the deinterlace mode to blend. You can then go ahead and keep either the top or bottom set of fields. Now, blending helps a lot, but it never gives you a clean result since it's essentially two fields faded into each other. This is when we move on to the more fancy algorithms. Instead of just blending the two fields together, the algorithm we're going to look at will attempt to reconstruct the missing data, reproducing a complete frame at full resolution. To do this, go ahead and set the deinterlace mode to Yadif. 
Notice how the individual frames look much better and the jagged areas get smoothed out really nicely without blurring. Now finally, here's one last kick we can add to the deinterlacing process. As you know, the interlace clip has a frame rate of 60 fields per second. If we can deinterlace every field at its current position in time, doesn't that mean we can produce a progressive scan clip at 60 frames per second? I hope you follow my thought process as that's exactly what we're gonna do. Keep your deinterlacing mode on Yediv, but set the field order to double frame rate. Now, the next question is, top field first or bottom field first? Well, I don't know. It depends on how your interlaced video clip was created. If you're not sure, choose any one at random. Go ahead and play back the video clip. If it runs jerkily, it means you've gotten the field order wrong. Go back and choose the other option. Either way, what you will be watching is a 60 frame per second video. You can tell it is because the motion seems extremely smooth and fluid. Unfortunately, I can't show you what it looks like since YouTube doesn't let users upload high frame rate videos, but I'll provide a link to a 60 frame per second file in the video description so you can see how much more fluid it looks. And there you have it, that's the options you have when it comes to deinterlacing and interlace clip. Now, once you have the clip prepared in virtual dub, you're gonna want to render it out to a file. The first and most important thing you should do is to go to video compression. Choose something other than the topmost uncompressed option. This is extremely important because if you don't do that, you're gonna end up with a 20 or so gigabyte file on your hands and you don't want that. Once done, go to file, save as AVI. Set a folder and a file name and you're good to go. Let the video render and you'll have a nicely deinterlaced clip ready for viewing or editing. And that's all there is on this topic of interlacing. I hope you've learned something and have a better understanding of the deinterlacing algorithms involved. But this concludes our mini series on interlacing and deinterlacing. As always, if you have any comments, queries, or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. I do my very best to read and reply to every comment. Also, I appreciate every like, favorite, and subscription you give me. But that's all there is for today. Until next time, you are watching 0612 TV.